Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at additional mathematics from four chapter one functions. And one of the subtopic is making and verifying conjectures related to the properties of inverse functions. So in this part, you have four conjectures that we are going to look at. And these four conjectures is from the from four additional mathematics textbook, page 22 to 24. So now we're going to look at the first activity which relates to the first conjecture. You are given a function g of x which is equals to x squared, meaning that g x equals to x squared. So the g of negative 1, so g of negative 1 here, you get negative 1 squared, which is 1. So to this maps negative 1 to 1. Then g negative 2 maps to 4. G1 will maps to 1, G2 maps to 4, according to this function. Now, for the inverse of G, set B and set A, we switch the position. The range here becomes the domain of the G inverse. We can use our information here to draw the arrow diagram. So since negative 1 and 1 maps to 1, here. So for the G inverse, 1 maps to negative 1 and 1 maps to 1. Likewise, 4 maps to negative 2 and 4 maps to 2. Then before we go to our conclusion, we look at the second function. The second function here is a function of h. h of x equals to x plus 2, which means the value of x we add to 2 to get the image. So h of negative 2, you get negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. So maps negative 2 to 0. h of 0, you get 2. And the same applies here. In order to find the inverse of h, we switch the position of set D and set C. Now set D becomes the domain. And using this information, we can complete the arrow diagram because 0 is mapped from negative 2. So here, 0 is mapped to negative 2. 2 is mapped to 0. Now, the question here is, are G inverse and H inverse functions? Are G inverse and H inverse function? To answer this question, we need to know the function is which type of relation. Okay, so this is a one-to-one -one relation, whereas the inverse of G is one to many. So now, since H inverse is a one-to-one -one relation, hence H inverse is a function. G inverse is a one-to-many relation, so G inverse is not a function. Only a one-to-one -one relation or many to one relation can be considered as a function. Hence, in this case, the hash inverse is a function where the g inverse is not a function. From this example here, we can conclude that a function f that maps set x to y has an inverse function, f inverse, if f is a one to one function. So in short, if a given function is a one-to-one -one function, then the inverse function exists. If the given function is other than one-to-one, -one, like for example this case, which is uh, many-to-one, then the inverse function does not exist. So how are we going to use the first conjecture to help us? We look at example number one. Determine whether the following functions has an inverse or not. So in order to determine whether the function has an inverse, we use the first conjecture, which states that if a given function is a one-to-one, -one, like for example this, this is a one-to-one -one function, it has an inverse. If the given function here is a many-to-one, it does not has an inverse function. Now we go to activity number 2, which is related to conjecture number 2. 
you are given a function f so 1, 2, 3, 4 here is the object and 1, 3, 5, 7 is the image of the function f so g is the inverse of f yeah? since the direction of the arrow is pointed from y to x it is an inverse of f so 1, 3, 5, 7 will be the object of g and 1, 2, 3, 4 will be the image of G. Now we try to fill in the blanks. Okay, F of 1. So F of 1 is 1. Hence this. F of 2 is 3. Hence this. F of 3 is 5. Now we try to look at function G. Function G is from Y to X. G of 1 is 1 g of 3 is 2 g of 3 is 2 hence g of 5 is 3 so g the composite function gf of 3 so f of we look at this part first this okay f of 3 so f of 3 is 5 hence the f of 3 here is actually 5 so it is 5 5. Then we go to G of 5. Huh? G of 5. Okay, we look at the diagram. G of 5, you get 3. Hence the answer is 3. Again, we try the next one. F of 4. F of 4. F of 4 is 7. Meaning that this is actually 7. This is 7, means this is 7. Then g of 7, g of 7 is 4, hence we get 4. Likewise, here, g of 5, g of 5 is 3, then you get 3, f of 3, f of 3 is 5. And the last one, g of 7, g of 7 is 4, and f of 4, f of 4 is 7 you will notice that like for example g of 7 is this which maps to 4 and then f4 you map from here to here back to the same value so from this 4 information we can conclude that the composite function gf of this value is equals to the value itself 4 4, 5, 5, 7, 7. So how can we conclude this? Okay, so given that if F and G are inverse of each other, okay, when F and G are inverse of each other, the composite GF of X here will equal to X itself. And the composite function of the uh, composite function G, uh, fg of x is also equals to the value of x. Hence, we can combine this to get the conjecture, the second conjecture, which is if function f and g are inverse function of each other, if and only if fg, composite function fg of x equals to x, where x is in the domain of g. Okay, so since x is here, x must be a value in the domain of g. x must be a value in the domain of g. Okay, and composite function gf of x equals to x, where x is the domain of f. x is the, in the domain of f. So in short, when f and g are the inverse of each other, we know that f g x equals to g x equals to x. So how are we going to use conjecture number 2 to help us? We look at example number 2. Are the following functions f and g the inverse function of each other? So if you are given two functions, and you don't know whether they are inverse of each other, 
we can use conjecture number two, which states that fgx equals to this equals to this. If we can prove this from this two, hence f and g are the inverse function of each other. If we can prove this, so the first thing we need to prove, we need to find composite function fg first. So fx equals to 3x minus 2. In order to find composite function of fg, x, we replace this with gx, replace this with gx. So you get f gx equals to 3 gx minus 2. So f Three and three, so you get x plus two minus two. In the end, you get x. So f g x composite function f g x equals to x. First done. So now we go to the second part. So from this and this, we can conclude that hence f and g are inverse functions of each other. That is how we use the conjecture number 2.